Hi guys! I just finished a print and I thought I would um, take this chance to show you the different settings um, that I use on the Cura for One House Slicer. Um, a few things to note before we begin. Now, um, let me power my printer up. So the printer is powering up. Now, um, I noticed a few a, a little issue that I um, come across whenever I print something, which is um, whenever I start printing, uh, sometimes I will have some problems. Even though I auto level um, the print head, the print head sometimes still get out of position. It's, it's um, more often than not, it's a little bit higher than uh, what I would like it to be um, because I can see when it's printing, I can see that the uh, filament is actually floating a little bit and it's not um, the first layer is not uh, being pressed down well onto the print bed and I realized that no matter what I set um, I would need to overwrite the settings and one way I do it is actually through this um, uh, adjusting this sensor over here manually this sensor actually you can actually just twist it um, up and down if you twist if you release it that means if you turn it anti-clockwise it will go up um, a little bit do it maybe half a revolution each time you will see the print head coming down if you turn clockwise again half a half a circle half a revolution each time it will go down and then if it goes down because it's a sensor it will sense that the print bit is closer the print head will go up a little bit so that's one way uh, one quick way of adjusting the um, uh, print heads uh, along the z-axis but do take note that it is um, it, it doesn't happen immediately so after you adjust it wait um, wait for it to, to do to go a while and then and then you will see it happening it will make a little difference the other place I adjust is actually under the settings here you press settings model settings you can actually just directly press the z-axis here Okay, to control the uh, print head up and down. Uh, you can even do this while it is still printing. So you can just press, um, maybe, usually I press about um, like that, one, one digit each time. Then you will see, you will see a uh, straight, almost immediately, uh, if you press plus, it will go up, the print head will go up. If you press minus, the print head will go down. That's how I adjust the z-axis um, up or down. All right. So now let's go through the um, Cura settings. Okay, the profile I use is usually if I want it to look um, nice and smooth like this. This one, you can see that it's pretty smooth. Okay, compared to this one. Okay, so the one on the left is 0.2 profile. The one on the right is 0.4. Okay, you can see a big difference, right? 0.2 and 0.4. Alright, so that's the profile setting that I use. Most often they're not. The layer height, again, for this one is 0 0.2. It means every layer, you see here the lines here, every layer is 0 0.2. Whereas uh, if you use 0 0.4, it will be thicker layer, so you will see uh, thicker lines. So it will not be as smooth. Okay, now the other setting that you need to take note of is the wall thickness now the wall thickness you can actually see it here let me see if i can get the video to focus on it it's a little bit thin i hope you can see it now the wall thickness talks about the wall over here you can see the smooth lining here this is the wall thickness this setting is 0 0.8 and then in between is the infill and then this side is another wall all right you can you can see it faintly right so this is the wall thickness, okay, 0 0.8 usually if I want something tougher, 0 0.4 if I don't mind it to be not as, it's still tough but I don't need it to be that tough, I can just use 0 0.4 so you'll print a little bit faster as well. The other setting uh, that is important is that of course the infill density, again if you want something to be tougher you use um, higher percentage, 50% um, is usually good enough for most stuff, if you want something drop you can set it even lower. If you want something even um, tougher, like this one, I want it to be tough because it's supposed to be something uh, quite strong to bear quite a bit of weight. So this particular print, I use 80%. So when you use 80% uh, infill, uh, it will take longer to print. Uh, printing temperature depends on the filament that you use. Uh, this particular one, the recommended is um, 
between 190 to 210 but I actually used 215 because I found out the, the filament melts better and the print uh, sticks together better and another thing that you need to take note which I made a huge mistake is the print speed now the one how um, duplicator 9 printer is capable of printing uh, 70 mm millimeters per second so, but I think, I've tried it out, I think the resolution is quite, um, not as good if you do 70. I'm not too sure. So the fastest setting I use is 60. And on the Prince uh, monitor, again, you can actually adjust the speed as you go along. So you can actually slow it down if you want. Uh, so usually printing I use 60, and the travel speed I use, you know, 70. Okay, but you can try a faster speed for travel speed, it's not a big deal. Um, one other important thing is the support. Now support, um, support means if there's something hanging in the air, like uh, if this print is sideways, if there's something sticking, sticking out here, it will generate support below, okay? So support everywhere means everything that is um, sticking out, it will generate, generate support, alright? Um, I usually use touching build plate only. Touching build plate only means um, those things that are directly uh, above the build plate. So for example, if I put everywhere, there's a little thing, let's say there's a little thing jutting out here, it will generate support to the base as well. But if I put build plate only, if there's something sticking out here, only this part will have support. This is this part here is not touching the build plate, it will not have a support. So that's what it means. Um, I recommend creating your own support instead of using the automatic one, because the automatic one, I, I think it uses quite a lot of uh, filament. I would recommend using a raft like this one. This is the print that I want. This is the raft. Okay, the raft helps your print uh, stick to the print bed because I realized that Pluketa 9, um, it, it does not, the print does not stick very, very well onto the print bed. So using a uh, raft will help a lot. And when you're doing the raft, uh, there's something called the raft air gap. The raft air gap actually refers to this part here how much distance do you want between your print here and the raft itself so you see this gap over here is the raft air gap the default i think is 0.2 which uh, is not good for me when i print at 0.2 my uh, print is basically fused to the raft and I, it is very very difficult to separate them so this time i tried a 0.5 air gap and it worked very well I can actually feel that I can I can I can actually feel that you know can you see can you see it's coming out just by feeling like that it's coming out pretty easily so um, I would recommend a 0.5 but you you can you should um, vary yours a little bit to to test it out and initial layer Z overlap um, you can use the, the recommended one and the raft layers raft top layers uh, I tried two and three I think three is overkill two is good enough so stick to two. So that's uh, most of the things that I use, most of the settings that I use, and the print sequence is all at once. So I hope um, you enjoy your prints. Hope this is useful. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye bye.